How do you even invest in a recession? We're going to go over a few points, four points actually today of how we're going to make that happen. Here we go. All right, so first things first, what do we want to do? Is we have to start with the number one thing, okay? And the number one thing is mindset. All right, now that's an easy thing for everybody to point out. Well, you gotta have the right mindset, you gotta have the right mindset. But what exactly in our mindset do we need to have in order to be successful? So first thing is, I know, it's great to watch me with my writing. Oddly enough, this is no different than my actual writing. Patience. Patience here is the first thing. Now we need to think that this is going to be long term. All right. That's what our mentality needs to be for investing. So while we're thinking about, man, this recession, how long is it going to last? Is it six months? Is it 10 months? Is it 18 months? Nobody knows. Anyone who's trying to forecast is full of lies, right? They just forecast enough that eventually one will come to fruition and then they'll hold on to that. But if you've got a long term game, if you're thinking in terms of decades, not months, your moves will act accordingly to that. You won't FOMO into things. You won't panic sell out of things. You just understand that, look, if this is a 10 year horizon, I'm going to make steps now that will benefit me in 10 years. And I'm not trying to make a quick buck in the next week, three weeks, maybe even six months. OK, number two is action. Now, you might be thinking, how in the world can you do both? How can you be patient but take action? And, I th and here's where things get a little bit interesting is that patience has to do with your mindset for the long haul. You understand that the gains that you may be making or looking to make are actually not going to happen soon. They're going to happen down the road. Action has to do with, look, I'm not sitting on my hands waiting for the market to turn. Because I'll tell you right now, there's not a single person on this planet who can predict the exact bottom of any market. So the point is, is that you need to take action on quality assets that you've done the homework on and you're going to buy into those as things progress. So you're not looking for the absolute bottom. You're not, you know, you might have certain targets set for you, but you can't be on the sidelines saying, hey, I'm going to sit on my hands. I'm going to wait to a specific point for me. That's not how you win in here. So you got to balance having patience for the long haul, but also being willing to take action. Number two here that we're going to talk about. All right. And this, what we're going to talk about applies to everything. Plan. Do you have a budget? Okay. Now, what does that mean? That means over the next year, let's say 2023, maybe even you want to do 2022, the, you know, the last month month and a half or so are do you have a total amount in your head of what you're going to put in the market what overall are you willing to spend and you're willing to invest in these assets in the crypto space do you have that down so is it a thousand dollars is it fifty thousand dollars is it a million dollars whatever the case is you got to have that budget in your mind that this is what i'm going to set aside now this doesn't mean that you're going to pile all in at once but it just means overall this is the ballpark figure that i have in my brain of what I'm willing to put into this market. So you gotta have budget for sure, okay? And along with that then, so you have the budget, but just, just thinking about or even writing down, hey, I'm gonna spend this much, doesn't get the job done. Do you have a schedule, okay? What does that mean, a schedule? Are you investing at regular times or regular time periods within the year? So if you're looking at 2023 and we're calling it and everyone's calling for a recession throughout 2023, are you investing bi-weekly? Are you investing monthly? Are you investing every quarter? Is it six months? One thing you shouldn't do is you shouldn't do one-time investment. So I would say that you just regularly start investing into a certain exchange. You keep it in the stablecoin USDC and then, or, or you can actually invest directly. So if you wanna buy Bitcoin, every bi-weekly you're gonna buy it at a scheduled time period right there's scheduled interviews intervals for whatever you're buying so you definitely got to have the schedule so budget is one thing but how you take that ballpark figure in your mind and split it up into regular intervals is actually the next thing
okay so definitely gotta have a plan in place for that and along so then so now we've broken down the schedule we've broken down the budget but what you want to look at is portfolio this is a big one all right many of us including myself when I started maybe you have a budget maybe you have a schedule in mind but you actually don't break down what you're actually gonna invest in and the percentages like and that doesn't mean you can't change it as you go along but it just means you got to have something in place so I want to actually start this up again here okay so portfolio we want to do and now how does this how does this break down all right so you're gonna have you're gonna have what I call blue chips so these are the tried trusted and true in crypto and we're looking here at Bitcoin and we're looking at ETH okay so then we've got stablecoin and for me that is going to be usdc alone i'm not going to get into the difference between usdc and usdt but my preferred choice is usdc and then we've got altcoins but there is one here number four i'm gonna wait Till we get through here that i don't think anybody's going to recommend or very few are going to recommend so uh, i want to save that so so let's go back to blue chip here bitcoin and eth these are the big daddies okay bitcoin especially is the king of the jungle as it moves so moves the market so out of the way 60 percent 60 percent of my portfolio is going to be wrapped up into bitcoin and eth if you want to take it a step further between the two, I would go 60% in Bitcoin and 40% in ETH. So we'll do a 60-40 split, okay? So example for that is, let's say your portfolio is broken out and 60% of your portfolio turns out to be $100. And out of that $100, you're looking to split up between Bitcoin and ETH. And since we're doing a 60-40 split, $60 will go into Bitcoin, $40 will go into ETH. That's how I would do it, all right? Now, we also then talked about stablecoin. Now, stablecoin, you just wanna look at it, it's kinda of like holding cash. It's digital cash at this point. And so you're parking it here so that if the market does continue to downturn, you have a reserve capital that you can actually use to get into the assets that you love, all right? So what I would do is I would put 30% here into stablecoin, okay? So then we've got altcoins. Now, obviously that's 90%. If you don't do the number four step or the number four portion of this portfolio, which I'll share in a, in a minute, that would leave you with 10%, okay? And altcoins or any other projects outside of blue, blue chips and stable coins, generally speaking, you wanna stick to the top 25 to 50 in market, market cap. I would say don't go beyond top 100. I'll share my three favorites right now. It would be Polygon. I would go Algorand. I'm just going to use their tickers here. And I would go Filecoin. File. Okay. Those are my altcoins that I would kind of spread it through. But mainly heavily into Polygon is where I would go. But what's this, what's this asterisk here of what I would do with this? And I'm gonna share that with you guys right now. Is I would put it into NFTs. I know you guys are probably like you're absolutely out of your mind. These NFT projects have lost 90, 95 percent. Some even 100 percent. They've all gone to some have gone to zero. Founders are nowhere, nowhere to be found. Why would I ever recommend NFTs? NFTs, we are just scratching the surface. When we go forward they're going to play a much bigger part and the blue chips. So as I mentioned, Bitcoin and ETH being blue chips for all of crypto, there are blue chips when it comes to NFT projects as well. And if you can get them at bargain prices, then you're going to be laughing as the market picks up again. All right. Now it all depends on the amount you have allocated for your portfolio. What's your budget, right? The blue chips here are going to be what they say base and mace those are just two of them all right now this is the board ape yacht club and the mutant ape yacht club they're all from yuga labs 
partnering with Animoca Brands and doing all kinds of things. Amazing projects with a great community and they, in my opinion, will be around for quite some time and will continue to evolve as time goes on. But base, you're looking at uh, you know, Board Ape, you're looking at a floor price, so the minimum price around 73 ETH. And Mace, which is much more doable for some, is around 13, maybe just under 14 ETH. So if, if, and here, let me do this again, this, this um, portfolio makeup. So if you're going to include this number four NFT here, then this 10% becomes 5% for altcoins and 5% for NFTs. That's how it works. it. So if you don't have NFTs at all, 60% is blue chips, 30% is stable coins, 10% is altcoins. If you decide to include NFTs, 60% is blue chips, 30% is stablecoin, 5% is altcoins, and 5% is NFTs. So getting back to the NFTs then, okay, well, maybe maybe this is too much for you. Maybe you're like, yeah, look, 14 ETH, 73 ETH, definitely above my price range. What else is there? So there are projects such as Clonex, World of Women, we're just going to do this, World of Women, and a project that I really like is called other side metaverse play the platform and they sell land nfts that are called other deeds i'm not going to get into these but much more doable i believe the floor price of other deeds is one and a half eth or 1.3 eth something like that clone x i believe is around five to eight eth somewhere in there so definitely doable you have to do your research you have to be heavily involved in the communities to understand which ones are engaged and ongoing and are continuing to develop in this space there are many projects some i own that founders are nowhere to be found. They're gone, they moved on, or the project has transitioned to new founders and they're trying to build it up. So those aren't the ones to invest in with that 5%. But if you can get these blue chips and it fits into that 5% of your portfolio, in my opinion, you will be laughing going forward. All right? So that's the portfolio version of it. So when we look at the plan, we're looking at the budget, we're looking at the schedule, and we're looking at the makeup of your portfolio. So number three here that I want to talk about. Number three, and we're talking about investing. Now, investing doesn't necessarily mean something that you get a distinct return on investment that you can see. All right. So number three is network. This one is all about investing in yourself. You've got to go out there and meet people in the space today because they are the ones building in the space whenever you, all the hype is gone all the fair weather fans all the bandwagon people all the people trying to make a quick buck they're gone long gone and so the ones who are in the market today are the ones who believe in it long term and are busy building and making those connections and so one of the things that is investing in yourself is creating a brand creating reputation and credibility that's all part of your brand and when you reach out to people now in, in, in the depths of all of this pain, they respect that and they remember that. And they're going to remember you as time gets better as well. That, hey, this guy wasn't just here. This girl wasn't just here because the market has flipped positive now. They were in it, had the pain that I had. And what also the point of this networking is that you will meet people who have been in the market since 2016, 2015, 2017, and they've been through a couple of these cycles so Bitcoin and crypto markets are usually running on a four year cycle. And you want to know, hey, how did you survive? What mistakes did you make? You know, how did you plan for this portion? Did it work out? So one of the best things about network is that it kind of cuts some of the pain down for you because you're going to learn from other people's mistakes. And if you can implement that and you get around the right network, it's going to take you so far. And here's what I'll say is try, try and get a network where you're leveling up. You're getting people who are ahead of the curve, they've experienced more, they've done more. That's the network that you wanna be a part of. The one wrinkle there is why do they want you in their network? So you gotta bring value to the network, somehow, some way, but you gotta get there. And you gotta meet people, you gotta create a solid foundation within your network so that you can take this plan and see if it works for you and see how you can modify and tweak it based on what others have done successfully. Do not take plans or do not take, you know, portfolio makeups from those who are investing less than you 
or who have done more who have done poorly it's what you don't want because the mindset is completely different so that's the key when it comes to building an amazing network and now is the time to do that and last but not least is going to be very important and something I need to even work on and it's something I don't think many of us do okay so number four is you gotta reassess this plan this mindset this networking that you're doing there has to be a, a time period a set time period of when you kind of reflect on everything what worked what didn't work where does the market look like it's going was i right was i wrong now ideally for me you're reassessing monthly now this doesn't mean that you're changing anything you're not going in and making big moves okay unless the market calls for it or you're completely wrong on one of your uh of, of one of your you know strategies or tactics that you use it's really just to monitor hey am i am i on the right path do i need to tweak something a little here you know do i favor something now that i'm in the space i've learned more about it you know that 60 percent in blue chips yeah i don't really like that now now i want to do 50 percent and allocate some more maybe to all coins or something or more into nfts or whatever it is so you're just tweaking you're not doing any big movements i will say this if you can't do monthly at least do quarterly because if you wait six months if you wait a year the crypto space moves so fast what worked today is literally a massive mistake within three months or just you know set it and forget it there are so many different things that could have worked in your portfolio but you weren't paying attention and so what may have turned out as a, as a positive pathway then crumbles down and then you're wondering why things didn't work out when the market kind of flips around for you this quote right here really breaks down everything in a nutshell and it says you make most of your money in a bear market you just don't realize it at the time and that is such a sound way of putting it and period when you're getting the best projects or protocols at the most severe discount that's when we're making the most money is actually in those decisions to invest when times are tough you do not make most of your money when things are already very hot and just skyrocketing that's not when you make most of your money understand that if we have that long time horizon we've got that mindset that it's you know we're talking in decades not in months we've got our budget and our schedule and everything our portfolio in place we've got the network of people that we can lean on and speak to and we're reevaluating or reassessing at scheduled intervals hopefully monthly but at least quarterly then we understand that we're making moves during this time period that are going to benefit us as time goes on and that's the main thing we're setting the foundation so that once the market flips which it will we are going to be the ones that reap all the rewards